apologize for being late. I had to cut my uh, vacation short and arrived very late last last night coming back. But uh, anyway, could you rise and join me in the pledge of allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This morning, this is a result of a closed session held July 21, 2009. The closed session was held pursuant to Government Code Section 54957.6. This was a conference with the Labor Negotiator, uh, Director of Human Resources and Risk Management, uh, Service Employees in International Union Local 1021 SEIU DSA, resulting in no action taken. Okay. Um, The purpose of this meeting is to receive uh, and uh, discuss the report regarding the state budget issues, and this will be a report uh, conducted by Shirley Ryan. There you are, Shirley. Um, anyway, with no uh, further delay, please begin. Uh, certainly. Good morning. Um, as you know, uh, the there has been negotiations going on at the state to try and resolve the budget deficit and come up with a solution and an agreement. Um, they are looking to fill a $26.3 billion budget gap. Um, on Monday, uh, July 20th, a tentative budget agreement was um, reached between the Big Five, uh, the governor and leaders of the Assembly and the Senate. Um, starting late yesterday afternoon, the state Senate met and they have in fact passed the budget bills. Currently the Assembly is meeting to consider and vote on those budget bills. So what's in the agreement? Um, as you're probably aware, some of the details are still coming out and the devil just can be in the details, but but as the trail bills are voted on the information becomes public. Um, the different associations are analyzing and forwarding information to us. That includes CSAC. We receive information from CWBA, from Chief Probation Officers uh, Association, and our department has been great forwarding that information to me that they've been getting. So we're trying to compile and analyze what we do now at this point. What we're looking, what the state is looking at, is about 15 billion dollars in state budget cuts. Um, Six billion to K through 14, three billion in higher education, 1.3 billion in state worker furloughs, 1.2 billion to corrections, which they haven't quite worked out what that um, exactly means, and I guess they'll be looking at how that's going to happen later in August. 1.3 billion to Cal to Medi-Cal, 528 million Cal Works, to 111 million. Uh, from IHSS, 226 million from Healthy Families, and $8 million in state parks, among other things. So in the revenues and savings that they're hoping to realize is $1 billion from the sale of all or part of the state insurance fund, $100 million from oil drilling on, off the Santa Barbara coast, an acceleration of collections of income and corporation taxes, Eliminating a number of boards, including into Grand Waste Management and the Board of Geologists. Uh, possible sale of around approximately 10 state owned buildings. And this one I really love 1.2 billion saved by deferring state employees' paycheck one day from June 30th, 2010 to July 1st, 2010. Or it saves it in the 9 10 budget, but they'll have to deal with it in the 10 11 budget. So what are, what are the big ones that local governments are concerned about? Well, the biggest one which we've been concerned about all along is the suspension of <coughs> funding and the borrowing of $2 billion from local governments. That is, that is in the bills. Um, the repayment would be June 30, 2013. There was supposed to be in there provisions for securitization, but the most recent information I've received from CSAC, those guarantees are not in there. And truly, given the state's credit, current credit rating um, in the financial markets and the bond markets, 
The ability to securitize um, revenues offered by the state could be difficult at best, if not impossible, and the cost involved may be um, significant enough that it's not worthwhile securitizing, if it's even possible. The taking of the local gas tax, or HUDA, um, $1.7 over two years, $986 million the first year, this, in 910, and another $745 million in 1011. And then $1.7 billion from redevelopment, again $1.35 billion in the current fiscal year, 910, and $350 million in 1011. And there's some caveats around this regarding um, the extension um, uh, to opt in to extend for 40 years, 30 or 40 years, securitization. If significant money is raised, meaning $3 billion by the state, then they may not suspend, the, they may not take the HUDA or suspend Prop 1A. However, they won't know that till December. What we do know is, again, the issues with securitization, with anything backed by the state, as well as the fact that L.A. County has already been authorized to file suit to prevent the taking of the RDA money, redevelopment money. So other issues that were contained in the agreement that are coming out, and I'm sure Karen will love this, loves this one, the recorder's fees. This is the um, modernization fees that counties can borrow for two years to offset the highway user's tax. Now, given what we have in that designated fund, it nowhere near offsets what would be taken in the highway user's tax. Additionally, because that's a take by the state and not a loan by the state, there's no mechanism if we were to borrow those fees to pay them back. I mean, there's not a revenue source that would come back to the county in two years to pay those back. But Plus, that's the, but legislated. Yeah, so, that, that's the so other they'd part. have to change the legislation. That, that's the other part that people, uh, the concern that's being raised by counties is, you know, <coughs> this is, is it really even legal to do such a thing? Um, they're talking about and have included privatization of eligibility <coughs> determinations for how works, food stamps, and Medi-Cal programs. There is no real explanation of how they arrived at the potential cost savings or what those upfront costs would be. Um, so some of this is, you know, we, we don't know the details again. They're also talking about cuts and cost shifts for the CalWORK single allocation funding and more stringent sanctions. We do know the Williamson Act <coughs> subvention is back in with a 20% cut. So what does this mean to Calaveras County? For the Highway Users Tax Account for Public Works, it's a loss in 0910 of $1.83 million. Basically, the state is taking 83% of the six cents per gallon, or five, cent, five of the six cents per gallon. And that means that their expected revenue of $2.2 million will be reduced to $370,000. In 2010-11, the, the HUDA loss is $1.5 million. I, the state will take 68% of the six cents per gallon, and it's a reduction from 2.2 million in expected revenues to 700,000. And so what does that mean to their 910 budget that was adopted at proposed? And that means the elimination of over a million dollars in capital equipment purchases. If you recall, they had a little over 1.3 million in the budget to replace um, uh, capital equipment that whose life expectancy has probably been more than exceeded. <laughs> I'm seeing nods over here. A uh, reduction of nearly 300,000 to the <coughs> supplies, 421,000 to salary and benefits, and those are basically unfunding currently vacant positions. There was the hope to bring back some of the extra hire people into vacant permanent positions and funding had been included in the budget for that purpose, that will not happen now. Those vacant positions will become unfunded. And there's a revenue increase, unexpected money, for work that was done um, on a rim project and Carl Moyer grant funds that were coming in. So they do have an increase to the revenues of 144000 And that's how they'll address the $1.9 billion million <laughs> dollar 
um, decrease in their budget. And basically, um, Kim and Tom sent me this uh, breakdown of the roadway roads all in M operations and maintenance budget and the breakdown of what they're getting in property taxes, HUDA, VLF, TOT, and Prop 42 prior to the adoption of this budget state budget agreement and they would would have had revenues totaling about five and a half million. Under with the HUDA losses it, that revenue drops to three point six million. Um, showing that their their element needs are about goes from one point eight million to almost three point seven. And again the losses that will occur in fiscal year 2010-11 with a reduction in the HUDA from 2.2 million to 700,000, and then the elimination or the Prop 1B fund no longer being available will increase their unmet needs from 2.5 million to 4 million. And what do we know about CalWorks and Human Services? We're, we're still trying to gather information on that and to how <coughs> services. Jeannie was not here this week, so I tried to touch base with all on uh, general fund departments that were impacted by um, cuts at the state. What it means in CalWORKs and human services is that there will be a reduction of 26% or almost 230000 to the employment training and services um, funding, um, a reduction of, again, 26%, which means $85,000 to child care services. In IHSS, 47 clients. Clients will no longer qualify for services under the changes made in the budget agreement, and 170 clients will face elimination of the domestic services portion of their assistance. And that's out of a case load of about 316. And, and again, as I said, the details of the other cuts are still coming out. So, and here's the big one, Prop 1A and, and what it means to our county. As you'll recall, um, we estimate that it's approximately just a little over a million and a half dollars that the state will take from Calaveras County. And we included that in the contingencies when we submitted the recommended budget for 910, which would leave, if they had pulled it, about $5,000 in contingency. Um, if you'll recall, during deliberations, um, an, an additional 618000 basically was allocated for various departments and positions. Um, and based on now what we know that the, the state in all likelihood, because of what the unlikelihood of the redevelopment money meeting the, the state's needs, they will um, borrow the 1.5 million, and that creates a deficit in the proposed budget that was adopted of just over $600,000. And then you have it, what we know so far. Julie, if we <coughs> have to give up the 1.5, mm -hmm. what will that do to our contingencies, bring it to zero? It will effectively bring it to zero um, and create a deficit of just over $600,000. With a deficit of $600,000. Well, out of the 1.5 that mm -hmm. we had in contingency, mm -hmm. the board reinstated the 600. Mm -hmm. Okay, if we say we have to give it all up, mm -hmm. so the 600's back in brings us back to 1.5, we give the state, we loan the state 1.5. That leaves our contingency at I'm zero. About, yeah, about five thousand dollars. Five thousand dollars. That's where it was. I'm interested in what we know about the eligibility uh, things. That seems to be. Uh, are, are they talking about consolidating all eligibility stuff in a computerized program through Sacramento? It certainly. <laughs> you know, there's a, that's always proved very effective in other departments, but what, what happens if, if all eligibility is done outside the county, there are no other agencies or no. organizations anywhere near here that would do that? They're talking for organization of company, uh, um, hiring a consultant or a contracting it out and having a contractor <coughs> do that. 
And, and, and there's a lot of concern in this, been a lot of concern expressed by CWDA and CSAC regarding this because other state, a couple of other states have done it and not so successfully <coughs> <coughs> at a higher cost. So with, without really having those details yet exactly what that looks like and how they arrived at the projected savings versus the startup cost um, has yet to be seen. And the startup date for for implementing that? Um, we haven't seen that language yet. As I, as I said, when the agreement came out on Monday, we, we learned some basic facts, but a lot of the bills were still being written, a lot of the details, and as you know, the devil, as I said, the devil can be in the details, it were, were being held pretty close to the, their chest until they had a chance to have the discussions with the various caucuses. And, and so that they had an understanding. So it's only been over the course of the week we're getting bits and pieces out. Um, CSAC still, we had a conference call yesterday afternoon, and, and again, it was just bits and pieces, um, and we have not had their full analysis yet because they have not had access to all the detailed language in the trailer bills. The well, just, bills. just one quick follow-up. Uh, we have received statewide recognition for getting the work out into the community service centers and the efficiencies and effectiveness of that has been well documented. But all the people that are staffing that are eligibility workers working in those programs that have just been tossed out. Does that mean we have the possibility of losing all those centers? If they go to privatization, a true privatization, that, that could very possibly mean what it means. Um, the impacts. We, we just don't know yet, uh, Supervisor Walensky, because we just don't have that level of detail. Right. Thank you. Any other questions? No, but yesterday, everybody was on conference calls yesterday. We're all grabbing for what little pieces of information. Um, Eddie Ballard and I were on one. <coughs> Secretary Gates, am I pronouncing that correctly, Michael? And they were talking about the reduction and how they're going to reduce the prison population. That will have an impact on county jails. They're going to be increasing the uh, what goes from a misdemeanor or felony from 400 to 2,500. Those cases will be those cases will go to they'll be tried in Calaveras and the inmates or that's the word I don't so if they're proven guilty will be in our jail system so it will have an impact on increased population to our jails and um, in the probation area just. They will be releasing elderly inmates, inmates with 12 months or less, and medically infirmed inmates. And, I mean, we don't, there's all kind of permutations of that, but the impact on the whole thing would be to the local jails and probation. That also will need legislative changes. Right, and, and from what I understand, they uh, delay acting on those until Next August month, because yeah. the the, uh, the whole agreement almost fell apart over that issue. That's what I wanted to bring you up today as best we could. Sure, Dunham. Uh, you know, we, we got a call about 45 minutes ago on it. Uh, the gas tax theft, uh, apparently the Senate has put that in, in their budget as a 10-year loan now, uh, rather than a direct taking. Uh, I, I, I don't know if that, I don't know if that at some point may or may not help the county, but it probably weakens the county's position on lawsuits, I would say. Um, uh, the, other, the other thing that was made real clear to us is CSAC and League of Cities are putting together a JPA for securitization. And from what was expressed to us, they believe that counties can pick up at, at, at least 90% of their money. Um, and 
guess I'll just ask as a result of the assembly vote. My understanding is those two organizations will basically send out the uh, how to uh, thing to all the to all the counties on, on, on how this JPA will work. And, and apparently, and I don't understand all this, but apparently the counties band together and they're they're selling this securitization as a, a humongous pool to get a much better interest rate. They When that would take effect, we don't have that. Even if we don't even know if they can be sold. Yeah, in a, in information that came out late yesterday afternoon from Paul McIntosh, you know, they, they, he st states that under the current version of the bill, bill um, there's no guarantee of one Prop, prop 1A securitization. The state's bond rating is just above junk bond status, and we understand it can go even lower. This is important because any securitization of the Prop 1A loan relies on the state's credit rating. There is no municipal bond insurance available to bolster the credit rating of the insurance issuance, which means the cost of borrowing will be higher and the language has to be carefully crafted to stand a chance of selling. So there, there, while there may be some hope, there is also real concern about the ability to securitize, according to Paul McIntyre. And the other spectacular news we got is uh, most of our funding was moved into VLF, and VLF revenues are, you know, are coming in about 13 to 14% lower than we originally projected. So there will be a reduction in what funding we were looking for. We, we had some mm -hmm. earlier conversation about the possible effects on some of the funding streams for our, our capital projects at the jail and the uh, were there any impacts to, to either of those? Not that I've heard, yeah. They, they are going to move 20 million, million? Yeah. out of 8,900, but it was the piece that was for infield for the prison system. It's not on the county side. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Um, for my part, this, this is um, kind of uh, it weighs heavily on me that we've been in discussions uh, with uh, the uh, bargaining units, uh, offering uh, options, and you know, if, if, if concessions will be made, we can do this, and, and uh, that, that throws all of that just completely. something if we could come up with the uh, 75,000 or excuse me, 75 percent of the funding we could refill it I have people that are interested but they're in positions that there is no way in this world I can guarantee to keep open for three years and dispatch corrections uh, even on the sheriff's side and stuff uh, I think it's, it's is there any room to move in that? Well I wish I had an answer for that is there anybody here that has any ideas on that particular question? It wouldn't be the it would not be the recommendation of administration to change that, but the board is free to do it, obviously whatever would like. <clears throat> uh, and the other thing, we're assuming, I hope, or I guess, that the assembly will actually pass something today or within the next couple of days. When does this board anticipate going into final budget? What was the question? When do we anticipate going into final budget? And if the state budget's resolved. Can we very quickly go into final budget? Tom, I mean, the problem, we've been working on this since April. 
I, I got fifty thousand dollars in staff time on this budget process. We need to move on with our lives, and we need this resolved. And if, well, if we can move to final budget, so we know what the hell's going on, we can make decisions, personnel decisions. We can do whatever we need to do, but we need to get this behind us. And go Dennis, on we budget. feel the exact same way, and I'm sure every department head in this county, general fund and non-general fund feels the same way that you do. Uh, all, all I'm asking is, is there any anticipation of the state budget settled? Is there yes, anything I'll preventing us from stepping after right in? <laughs> the, the other part of this is, yes, the state budget is settled, but we also have to close the books for 2008-2009. Um, I've been in conversations with the auditor's office. They hope to have them closed on the 31st, but that doesn't mean any guarantees. And we, and we do not move forward with final budget until the books are closed for 0809 and we actually know what the true financial position is. That is at least what, we, what has been done historically. My, my own feeling, Dennis, would be is that uh, assuming the assembly also passes this budget, as we need like two or three weeks before we go into final budget, because there's going to be all kinds of additional information that's going to come out. These trailer bills are going to look at all this, and we're going to have to have some sort of clarity as to, as to uh, 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 how this sifts out. And, and, you know, I think that's going to take two or three weeks once this gets uh, uh, adopted, and we're going to have everybody then just absolutely going through everything in, in detail and finding out who's going to file suits and who's not, and what Wall Street's willing to do on securitization and what they're not. And, and all that. I think once we get that clarification, that it certainly is appropriate to immediately go into final budget deliberations. I guess what I'm hoping is by Tuesday we'll know whether the bargaining unit's concessions are accepted, where exactly we stand on things, to see whether we can make things work, and if we can get a commitment from the board that, that we will have a final, final number of what's owed by our bargaining units, um, and, a, and a commitment to move into final budget as, as soon as we can, and I understand we can't do it in two days and you know, we need to look at things. But yes, I think it will happen in a timely manner. But I would encourage it to happen. I want, I want just, I, I don't know if you know, but the, those layoff notices that went out next Friday are there to the effective. Okay, do you have a question? All right, um, if there are no further questions, then uh, that uh, concludes this portion of the meeting. We'll be going into the closed session to uh, discuss how this affects us. Let's go to Okay.